you guys welcome to vlogtober um i have just got out of the gym as you might be able to tell from my very rosy complexion but today i felt for the first time like i was getting my fitness back i feel i feel very worked out don't get me wrong but i just felt like today i could do more things this is what i wore to the gym by the way this morning you guys before i take it off um i've got this mesh top on from adidas that i got in sale a while ago um an adidas sports bra in this nice neon yellowy color and then my adidas leggings which you saw me in the other day um but i've still got my nike shoes on but that's me got myself a little coffee and it's definitely time it's definitely time to wash because I am very sweaty. When I bathe and go, I see you. Wearing a towel, so don't be alarmed. I don't know how many pieces out there are gonna tell me off for this, but um, I never put tea tree oil on like a super fresh piercing because that's like a fresh wound and you don't want to be doing that because tea tree oil is very strong. But um, if you've got one of those piercings that's just like crusty for like a year afterwards, um, I found that tea tree oil is like the best thing at just getting rid of that and healing up the piercing for good. So yeah, don't put it on for the first like couple of months, but I have a couple of piercings which are still playing up, so um, my dice or dace um, is still getting a bit crusty because I fiddle with them as well, which I shouldn't do, but um, and this little star in here and this one at the back as well. So I, I just put it on. If I'm diligent about it, they clear up so, so quickly. I'm in my cool comfies today i'm wearing my new um joggers that i showed you guys in my like night call thing and then this old tennis i believe it's a tennis top from nike which i got ages ago um so that's what i'm wearing today i think i'm gonna i've had this cult beauty package for ages um because they very kindly sent me a gift card so i thought i would show you the bits in it it's really exciting i don't know why i haven't opened it but um, i wanted to show you guys properly so i'm probably going to set up all nice i don't know whether to do a little bit of a first impressions okay so i've decided i'm not doing a first impressions because i don't know if i have like a full face i have lots of similar ish products I'm just gonna do like a simple face this morning um, I do really like using um, Glossier Cloud Paints on the eyes. I don't know if you're allowed, so don't take me at my word for that one. But I'm going to use this one, which I've actually not used on my cheeks yet. It's called Storm. I think it's one of the two new ones that they released. It's giving me that kind of worn-in look that I quite enjoy. Um, I also have some NARS things to show you. They sent me a few bits, including these brow perfectors, which are really nice, actually. You know, you think an eyebrow pencil is an eyebrow pencil is an eyebrow pencil. Um, but for some reason, I do really like these. So, like, the colour goes on easily. But quite precise still as well. Uh, they also sent me, they've got, I don't know if these are new, but I presume that they are, the tinted smudge-proof eyeshadow bases. But yeah. The smudge proof eyeshadow base is great, so it's good that they have tinted ones now. I don't know whether to maybe use this on my cheeks as well, just to make it all a bit adhesive. I'm still going on my coffee. I've kind of forced myself to like black coffee through sheer force of will, and now I quite enjoy it. Sorry, my memory card died, so I don't know if memory card died. My um, memory card got full, so I don't know if I've moved slightly. Um, so yeah, I reckon I am going to use the Storm Cloud Paint just on my cheeks as well. I'm going to use a tiny bit because it was quite dark. As you guys know, I am just obsessed with blusher at the moment. Um, I just can't even leave the house without it now. Well, I can if I'm wearing no makeup. But if I'm wearing makeup, I can't not do blush. 
just makes me look alive. Okay, we're gonna do the full whammy. I'm gonna put a little bit on my lips as well. Okay guys, that is my super quick face. I don't know what to do with my hair today. I'm quite enjoying it, my fringe back, because it just does drive me a little bit crazy. But I'm not sure that this ponytail is really working for me. Maybe we will return to a nice side part. I'm not sure what the best way to style it. Side fringes. Wow, that was really awkward. Okay guys, we're all ready to go. How exciting! I went over my gift card um, from Cult Beauty, so that's why there's an excessive amount of things. So I bought some of these things myself, um, including this, which I actually ordered before I ordered this, like a few days before, because I desperately needed it, and that's why it's open. Um, it's my Evlom Rescue Oil-Free Moisturiser. I ran out of it and needed it back in my life. It's my favourite moisturiser for uh, my skin. It doesn't break me out, which pretty much every moisturiser out there does. Um, it is oil free, like it says, and it's also like dimethicone free, which is really, really rare. Um, so, love this stuff. So, first things first, I have a kind of weird one for me. I have never bought anything like this before, um, but I've got I've got the Vita Liberata Body Blur HD Skin Finish in Latte, um, which is kind of like a self-tanner, but also um, like that Sally Hansen leg spray stuff. It says it minimises blemishes, covers imperfections and smooths skin for an HD ready skin finish. I am intrigued by this. I've never used any fake tan before. But I feel like if I'm going on a night out and I want my legs to look cute AF, this could be the way forward and I got the mitt as well um, because I don't want to be streaky. We have a slightly injured Brazilian Boom Boom Cream, I think is the way you're supposed to pronounce it, from Sol de Janeiro and um, Cult Beauty sent me like a small, well I've got a really tiny one and then I had a slightly bigger one, I think it's the smaller size um, from Cult Beauty and it's so nice. It smells amazing. I didn't miss an opportunity to pick up the big fat one. The only problem is it's so expensive um, for a body cream, but it smells so good. Like, I love my Palmer's Cocoa Butter, but you just can't beat this stuff. It has a really light shimmer in it as well, so it's going to make you all glowy and pretty. And it also is a nice moisturiser as well, like it does a good job of moisturising. Next I have an hourglass product. This is the Ambient Lighting Blush and I believe it's in the little travel size. Cult Beauty are doing loads of little travel sizes at the moment and I love it because I am one of those people who takes about 60 years, I've not even been alive for 60 years, to finish a product. I rarely, rarely finish products so um, Things like this are good even if you're not going travelling for me because then you're spending slightly less money and you've got a little teeny one. It's just cute. So I got this in the Radiant Magenta which is really gorgeous. Um, I'm doing this really randomly so stick with me. Um, I've got this Zoeva, Zoeva um, Caramel Melange palette. Um, what an interesting name. I thought this would be huge. This is so much smaller than I thought, but that's a good thing because if I like the colours, it will make the perfect travel palette. Because I have, like I've said before, like I have so many enormous palettes, but there's just no way I'm going to travel with all of those. So this is what it looks like. Um, oops. I love this colour. And then it's got, yeah, three mattes on the top and three shimmers on the bottom. Let's have a swatch. So I'm just gonna go into this colour that I like. Looks pretty good to me. And then we'll go into a shimmer. Let's do the gold. 
yeah, good. Looks good. Um, and I do, it's so cute and teeny. I love it. Um, so yeah, that'll be a good little wee travel palette for me. I have never tried any Zoe sh shadows, so we'll see how that goes. Right, so next I've got a skincare product. Now I'm very particular about my skincare products. I basically try not to try too many, but my skin is so reactive to new things um, that I try not to try too many, too many things, but this looks pretty great. This is the e-cooking acne serum with salicylic acid, but it's antibacterial, um, it's fragrance free, um, and I did check the ingredients of this and it looked like it had good ingredients for me. So if I have a spot, I'm gonna give it a go and pop it on. Whilst we're on skincare, I've got another one of my absolute favourites. I could not, it was in stock, so I was like, right, I'm going to pick this up right now, even though I've got about six in my cupboard next door. I am in love with the Ordinary's Niacinamide 10% plus Zinc 1% Serum. Cannot live without it. This stuff is a lifesaver. It's um, It calls itself a blemish, high strength vitamin and mineral blemish formula. Um, and it is good for blemishes, but because of the zinc and the niacinamide, it will also be good for scarring. It really, really helps with my scarring, so love that stuff. And it's five pounds, so whilst it's in stock, get your hands on it, it's so good. We have an Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lip. Um, now, I think I bought quite a few vampy shades um, for this haul because I'm just ready to go into autumn winter now and I haven't worn vampy lipstick that much the past few years and if you're an OG subscriber you'll know that there was like a year or two when every autumn winter I wore it basically every day so um this one's in poet and it's a little bit lighter than I thought it would be but maybe if I swatch it for you guys see how nice is that I don't think I've ever had a color like this so it's kind of like I want to say like a faded purple. It's really nice and it's called Poet which is cute. This is a product I love but I smashed my last one and I was very sad about it and I've been meaning to pick it up ever since. This one looks enormous though. Was my last one a travel size? I don't know. Right, it's a little bit smaller than the box but this is the Jouer powder highlighter in Citrine. My eyes went funny then. And it's honestly these Jouer highlighters. I kind of want other ones as well because they're so gorgeous. They are heavily pigmented so use a light light hand. Citrine is like a light gold, so look at that. How beautiful is that? Um, so I'm glad I've got that back in my life after I smashed it, sad times. Um, I've got an Hourglass Translucent Setting power Powder in Veil, which is kind of, I think, like their ambient lighting powders in loose powder form. So, because I'm in love, I've already got my fingerprints all over it, um, because I'm in love with that very kind of glowy look at the moment, I think this will be a really fun one to try. Um, I think it'll probably be quite subtle. Oh, I'm not going to open that just yet because it'll just go everywhere. It's going to be like a slight lighting effect. I imagine it's got like a really finely milled shimmer in it or something like that. Also, I think I looked it up and it didn't seem to have too many bad ingredients in. Um, so... That's good. We also have a few eyeliners because my Suku one, which has been going for about two years now or something ridiculous, um, I feel like I need to update it. It can't be good to have an eyeliner that long, even if it is still going. And the last time I got a Tom Ford one, the one that I loved so much, it just like dried up so quickly, much quicker than older ones that I'd had. So I don't know if they've changed the formula or I just got a dud one, but I thought it was high time I tried something new anyway. I've got the Jouer Kitten Liner. Um, this has got a felt tip, I think. Really nice actually, very black. And um, the only problem with felt tips is that they do dry up super, super quick. So that's one of the eyeliners I've got. Let me see if I can find the others. Um, so I also got one from NYX. This is the Epic Ink Liner. This one is a brush, which is how which is the same as the Suku and the Tom Ford, which are my favourite liners. Um, I just prefer that teeny tiny brush effect, so I'm just going to pop it there. Also, this one would be 10 million times cheaper if it works out for me. But yeah, that line's very nice. Hopefully, don't dry out. Finally, I got a gel liner because I haven't had a gel liner in ages and I've been wanting to do some gel liner looks, just things that would work better with a gel but I haven't had one. My old ones have obviously all dried up. So 
I've got a Morphe one here in jet, just like a nice plain black. Look how beautiful, I love new gel liners. So pretty. I've got a couple of brushes, I don't know why they need so much packaging, but um, I've got this Sigma one, a very tiny winged liner brush, which, will, which I will probably use with my gel. I always need brushes like this and I never have enough of them. Look how tiny that is, I've never had a winged liner brush that small, can you even see? And then I also got a classic concealer brush. I haven't had one of these for ages and um, most people are using them. This one's from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I just wanted to do some cut creases for myself with it. Okay, it's absolutely refusing to focus on this and my arms are tired. So <laughs> it's a concealer brush, I'm sure you guys can see. I got some really interesting products. One of which is from a brand called Ritual Defeat um, and it's in Pixis is the name of it and it's this like very iridescent um, kind of pearlescent glitter I think. I'm a bit scared to take the lid off. Oh. oh, I think it's a gel or something. I thought it was loose. I think I'll have to use a brush but I'll just bring it up close, hopefully it'll focus. So that's interesting. Um, I've got a couple of things that go together. I've got this NYX Glitter Primer. I do love a little bit of glitter every now and again, especially on a night out or something. So I thought I'd get this because um, it's specifically made for glitter. So that's not massively exciting. But to go with it, I've got this glitter in, it just says 06 on the bottom. But it definitely had a name, I think. Um, but it's this gorgeous like, I don't know if it's coming up very well, but it's like a dark glitter with all colours in it, like lots of rainbowy colours, so I'm interested to see what that's going to look like on the eyes. A few more NYX products, I've got their suede matte lipsticks in three colours, I think. So this one is in Brunch Me, it's a very me shade, we'll see how, um, let's just swatch that. Just a really nice everyday shade. We've got Fetish, which I, looks to me to be a bit lighter. Okay, the sticker has left a nasty mark on that, a nasty sticky patch on that. But um, yeah, this is more like kind of myth from MAC or something like that. I do like this kind of colour, especially on a night out. And you can also put a gloss over that as well. And then finally we've got Cold Brew, which is much darker. I do like the finish of these though. They're going on really nice and like soft, but definitely matte. So that's that one, kind of classic vampy colour. It's kind of similar to Poet, but it's got that little bit more red in it. Sticking with NYX lip products, I've got another product from them. This is the Powder Puff Lippy in squad goals. This is what it looks like, it's a nice slim package. Um, so it's got one of these super fluffy applicator things. Now I don't know really how it works, I guess I just kind of squeeze. So it's supposed to go on moussey and set to a powdery soft finish, but it is not telling me. I guess I just keep squeezing. But there seems to be, oh, I can see a little bit of colour. I don't know how, obviously this applicator is not going to be very precise though because it truly is a big fat fluff ball. Just that one there. Quite pretty, pinky. Probably go well with my makeup today actually. Maybe I'll pop it on. I like the kind of soft focus effect that it's giving, it's nice. So, I also bought this, which I've had before. Um, and it's the Too Faced Melted Liquefied Longwear Lipstick in Sugar. And I remember loving the colour of this, but at the time I wasn't into my glosses, so I ended up getting rid of it eventually. Um, even though I did wear it a fair bit, I think I bought it in New York or something. But yes, it suffered during one of my clear outs, it went. Um, but now I've got it back because I'm into my glosses and things now. And it also has, it's very similar to the NYX one. And it also has that kind of fluffy applicator, but I cannot remember, I don't remember it being quite so difficult to get out. Yeah, it's already squeezing out. Um, this one's a lot lighter. So, can you guys see? It almost looks like a highlighter there, right? 
and it will kind of dry down a little bit but it is still quite glossy um, but it's like a baby soft pink and again it because of that applicator it gives quite a soft finish so it doesn't it's not like a super baby pink lipstick it just kind of nudes the lips out of it. Next up we have the NARS Full Vinyl Lip Lacquer in Everglades. Sorry guys, my memory card got full. Again, intrigued and excited about this. It's like a full-on gloss gloss, like a lacquer gloss. Ooh. <laughs> um, look how cool that is. I love that. It almost looks black on camera. Dark plum with a gold reflex. Like a very dark plum. And I've been saving a good one for last, you guys. I've got this Anastasia Beverly Hills Norbina palette, which I'm so excited to open. How gorgeous is that? That is immediately be going to become incredibly dirty, but it's gorgeous whilst it lasts. It's like obviously their classic like velvety um, packaging. Those pressed glitters look incredible. This is what it looks like inside. I'm sure you guys have all seen it, to be fair. I don't even want to touch those glitters because they look too nice. Oh, I'm going to have to touch one. Right, let's do rose gold because it looks insane. <gasps> oh my god. I'm running out of hand space because I've like really badly organised this. <gasps> you guys, stop. That's too much. I can't touch anything else because I'm going to get glitter everywhere. But that is everything. Finally, we are at the end. Uh, I am going to go and sort myself out now and put some of this stuff away. Uh, and then I feel like I want to get some food soon. Um, I kind of feel like I want to go out. I have completely forgot to do two chores I was supposed to do on the way back from the gym. That's why I wrote stuff on my hand. I might go back out and then eat lunch out. I kind of feel like I want to eat lunch like in somewhere. Like maybe get like a Franco Manco or something. Is that a bit bougie for a Wednesday? Yes. But maybe I'm just gonna live my best ladies lunch life. So I'm gonna go and do the chores that I should have done this morning and I'm not gonna get a Franco Manco because I realize I might be having pizza tonight. I might be seeing another of my master's friends. Um, so if I'm doing that, I probably shouldn't have pizza for lunch. I've got my big boots on. As you can see, and literally never takes off. Night jacket, just comfy and simple. So I've just arrived where I need to be. I'm gonna go and pick up some pictures that I dropped off at Snappy Snaps. I had some disposable cameras in Mallorca and I never got around to giving them in, so I need to go and pick those up. dropped my hard drives off for them to back my old hard drive onto should not have got what I got for lunch it was way too heavy and now I feel all like I, I was looking at the salads and I was like no I'm gonna get a crockman here because that's what I feel like but I didn't realize I think traditional ones have that like covering of bechamel sauce but I didn't realize realize it would be a traditional one and I was just like that's too much and then I had chips obviously and then I had calamari and it was just I over-ordered and I ordered wrong, I wish I'd got a salad. I forgot I have to edit Vlogtober. That's something I have to do. Truly, how could I forget? Um, it's like you think I haven't been doing this for five years or however long I've been doing it. Also, I don't know if you guys are interested, but I thought I would talk you through some of my favorite podcasts. I am, when I listen to podcasts, I'm typically doing something else, like getting ready in the morning, I find so boring. I think it is, truly the millennial way of being so i'm pretty basic about it i just listen to true crime so obviously there are some that are really um exploitative and they tell the story as if it's like proper entertainment and you know true crime is dealing with people's real lives real crimes real murders um so i don't like those ones so much like for example up and banished is just awful i have listened to some of it but it is so like drama, drama, drama and exploitative. So I don't love those ones, but I thought I would share with you guys my favorite ones. Um, and then often some of them have like something to say, whether it's about police corruption or police treatment of minorities or that kind of thing. 
So those ones that I find particularly good are the ones that treat things really sensitively. I really like Missing and Murdered by CBC Podcasts. Um, that's presented by Connie Walker, I think her name is, and it's looking at um, First Nations people in Canada. Um, Someone Knows Something is okay. Some of the series is series are better than others. Sometimes it's a little kind of edges into that up and vanished territory, but it's slightly, I feel like it is slightly more sensitive than them. Um, I listened to Uncover, which is Escaping Nexium with Zach, so I need to wait for him to, um, for us to be in the car together to listen to the rest of those, but that's obviously about the cult. Well, cult. Is it a cult? Whatever you define it as, as ne of Nexium. I've been listening to um, Accused, which has been pretty good. Oh, and In the Dark. I really like them. I think they're very good um, journalists uh, by APM Reports. And there are a couple series of them, two different cases. Of course, Serial, but I listened to that ages ago. I think those are my best recommendations. Um, I haven't listened to the new... Oh, and The Teacher's Pet, of course, but that one does get a little bit repetitive and I find that the presenter can be a little bit abrasive towards the family and friends of the victim. Um, but that one I know has been really popular. Death in Ice Valley is really good. That was one by the BBC World Service and NRK. And that's like about an old Scandi case from back in the 50s of this unknown woman called the Ice Star Woman, I think. That's really interesting. Um, Dirty John I listened to ages ago and enjoyed. I think that's everything, but now I need to get footage off this camera, so I will see you in a bit. So I'm all done with Vlogtober again, uh, apart from the thumbnail, I need to do that in a second. Um, loving how quick this computer exports videos, it's a dream. Oh yes, I was going to write a blog post today, but I am feeling pretty sleepy. What I'm saying is I'm going to... Um, chill out for a little while and then Zach gets back relatively early today So maybe he's gonna help me with pictures and and then I'm gonna go meet my friend but Yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm still in the mindset where I Easily like rush my content because I'm like because I always had to fit it around Oh, excuse me around uni before Whereas now I don't have to fit it around you so I can take my time with it and make it the best it can be And if I was to write this post today, it would not be the best it could be also, I've been noticing when I'm editing, because I'm using like different cameras, how much better the Panasonic that I bought, that I talked about in like a vlog a little while ago, how much better quality it is. Not just video, but the sound as well, right? I'm sure you guys have noticed as well, some of the clips, the sound's just rubbished. So, yes, highly recommend the Panasonic GH5. It's great. It is a little bit bulkier, hence why I've been taking other cameras out. So I'm not fully finished with Bake Off, but Zach is back. So I'm going to take a few pics before I come back and finish Bake Off. So I'm just saying, I need to pause my music. I can't speak and listen to music. <laughs> there we go. Um, so I'm off to meet my friend now. We can get pizza, like I said, and then maybe get a couple of drinks. So my loves, I thought I would just tack this little section onto the end of this vlog because I know it's been a while since I uploaded a vlog and I thought I'd do a little explanation for you. So after I filmed this I had a couple of days when my aunt's health was getting worse and <clears throat> I had some pretty bad vlog footage from then because I was worried and stuff. So I'm not going to include that here. And then on Saturday I ended up going and doing like an emergency trip down to Devon. My aunt passed away whilst I was down there. So um, I feel like this is a nice vlog to end on for you guys. I'm not going to continue with Vlogtober. I might upload bits and bobs here, but I think vlogging specifically would not be <laughs> very enjoyable for you guys. So I'm sorry to end Vlogtober early and I'm sorry it, it has been sporadic. So yeah, thank you for all your support this Vlogtober. About Vlogmas, um, I'm just going to kind of play it by ear. I think probably I won't do it this year um, just because maybe I need to kind of recalibrate. I need to really find like a rhythm and a routine and an equilibrium I think before I attempt like a month of vlogging because like I said um, 
I think at the beginning of Vlogtober, I'm kind of in this transition phase and obviously dealing with family stuff. Um, so we're going to see if I feel like I really established that equilibrium by December and a routine by then, then we'll go for it. But I have a feeling I'm just probably going to spend some quality time with people that I love and um, kind of not put the same pressure on myself to vlog. I will be doing some vlogging though over the next couple of months but I'll just pick and choose a little bit more carefully make sure they're a bit more interesting for you guys um, and that I'm in the kind of right headspace to do them as well. So yes thank you guys for being patient with me and for your support and love, um, very appreciative of that. I imagine I'll be a little bit more active on Instagram and maybe my blog um, for the time being. It's a little bit less up close and personal than YouTube is which I love about YouTube but it means at times like this it can be it can be a difficult anyway thank you guys for watching didn't want to end a happy vlog in a sad way and I will see you again soon